welcome back to my channel. Uh, I am excited to be back in my little studio after I've been away. And just a quick note of thanks for your patience with me if you are a subscriber or an avid watcher. Um, thank you so much for supporting my channel and for watching and your comments and everything. I really appreciate it. Anyways, I am back and today I'm going to do a little sort of FAQ tutorial on textures, working on raw canvas, rolling your canvas to ship in mail. I have gotten a few comments and questions from people um, regarding what textures can you use on a canvas that you want to roll and ship? And this is a really good question because it's very specific what you can and can't use. This is a uh, piece of raw canvas and some artists will paint on raw canvas versus the stretched canvas. If you're working small, you know, you, working on stretched is probably the way to go, really. It's the best. But if you're working large, like really large, obviously you're going to want to probably roll and ship your canvas because shipping a very large stretched canvas is an undertaking <laughs> to say the least. You have to have crates built. Um, it's very expensive. Some customers want it, you know, to arrive ready to hang and some would prefer that you just roll it so they can have it framed or stretched at their local frame shop. So, um, I've just stretched a piece on a canvas board here just to show you. You can see when you work on a rolled uh, or raw canvas, you're going to have a little bit of wrinkling. It's really hard to get it exactly tight. You know, um, I could clamp it all the way down here, but this is just a demonstration video. I'm not going to make an actual painting, so I'm not going to go through that process. But this is just a piece of, you know, canvas that I just tacked on here like that. All right, so I'm gonna go over my textures and which ones you can use to paint on raw canvas and which ones you should avoid. All right, so I'm gonna go over the, the no list first. And the no list is one of my favorites here. It's a modeling paste. I use this quite often in uh, my tutorials. This is just the brand. Usually it's a mold, molding paste, modeling paste. There's very kinds of kinds of paste. And that's the key word that you want to keep in mind is a paste. A paste is going to be just like what it the name implies. It's going to have a very pasty, white, chalky type of consistency. Uh, I really love this particular thing because it lays down. All right, so really we nice. laid down our paste, our modeling paste, molding paste, whatever. I would. This is another right, brand. So the next one that I laid down is the extra heavy gel. This is a molding paste. You really need to be careful about working with anything with the word paste in the title. So uh, the next, the next texture that you can work with and this is on the pro list of yes you it's probably okay to use it it's going to be called a gel so anything with the word gel as its title in the title of what it is is going to be a more flexible structure so working on something like a raw canvas or doing a ship and roll, roll and ship, is going to give you a more flexible surface. So it's probably more likely that you can roll it. But I would highly suggest that you test out whatever texture medium you're using because, um, and do it on a sample piece of canvas like this. You know, do a little painting over dry texture, roll it. Let it sit a few days and see exactly what happens to that texture because there really is no telling. But if you're going to do a ship and a roll and ship painting or work on raw canvas, even if you're going to do a raw canvas and then frame it, you're not going to roll it and stretch it. Anytime you work on a on a on the canvas that is not stretched and tight, like tight as a drum, 
you're going to have the potential for this to contract when it dries and of course then crack. But working on something that's going to give you a much um, more flexible texture is going to be a gel versus that paste substance. A gel is going to dry a little more transparent. A paste is going to dry opaque and white. Uh, a gel is going to give you a more plasticky substance like an acrylic paint. So it's going to sort of roll with it <laughs> quite literally as you remove the canvas, remove the canvas from your painting substance. Uh, substrate and roll it. This texture and move it around. after those, the gel and the paste is a kind of fun texture I like to use sometimes. It's a string gel, and I don't know if you've ever used this. It's sort of a, well, just what it implies a very stringy gel consistency. And this is cool when you mix it with water or you just apply it, you can just get this sort of runny stringy kind of texture. Now this is going to be far better to do as a rolled painting because of the general nature of it. It's already very flexible. It's a gel and it's not going to dry particularly hard and inflexible. So that's one and this can be I did use this in a tutorial before. Um, this can be moved around, you know, with your palette knife and uh, create some kind of interesting textures and patterns. Now, one thing I do want to talk to you about when using your textures is to use a tool like a palette knife of some sort. I would not suggest using a brush, especially a fine brush, something you pay good, really, you know, a more expensive brush to lay down textures. It's hard to get out of your brush and they just don't lay down as well unless you're very experienced with doing it. So I would always say work with a knife of some sort. So um, the next one that I can talk to you about is going to be a fiber paste and these will tend to dry up if you don't use them and I have been gone for a couple months so a lot of times my mediums will be dry when I get back but this one this is a fiber paste all right and this is going to have sort of a texture to it but it's like ground paper like ground pulp a pulp type substance that you can lay down to increase absorbency and add texture at the same time. So it's kind of unique. It really gives you a very interesting texture and will increase absorbency. So if you want sort of a washy, uh, watercolory effect on part of your painting or you know in, in sections, you can use this, dry it, and then add that acrylic over it um, to get that sort of washy watercolor look. And so we'll go over that. even covering some of these mediums with the acrylic paint, which is going to lend to it a little bit of a, a protective plasticky coating, if you will, which is what ultimately acrylics are. It's going to protect it from cracking and kind of help it uh, to stick, you know, stay on your canvas versus crumbling off. However, you can't always count on that. And I did learn that the hard way once I, I did a beautiful painting with my molding paste and it was on raw canvas. I finished it, I, it dried, I framed it, and wouldn't you know, I got a big crack right through. Just from the simple fact that the canvas itself had contracted as it dried and sucked away all that moisture that was in it and of course I got cracks. Now sometimes I do that intentionally with the molding paste and get some really cool cracked textures. So that's just something you can keep in mind.
Uh, the next one I have is an absorbent ground. Now this isn't necessarily what I would call a texture medium. An absorbent ground is going to be something that's a much thinner base than your fiber paste, but it's going to give you the absorbency on your canvas like paper. It's going to give you sort of a paper tooth. So if you want that watercolor washy effect, you can lay down absorbent ground on your canvas and then lay down a very um, thin layer of acrylics and do washes that way. This is a beautiful texture to use when you want to create, create that sort of watercolory water effect with acrylics on canvas. Now this is a very thin um, medium and mine has almost dried up, but it will give you a a nice thin layer of absorbency. However, you sometimes will need to apply more than one layer with this. I found that one layer of absorbent ground doesn't give me that much absorbency. So if you mix it with some water and you apply thin layers, uh, let each layer dry in between, you can build up a beautiful tooth on your canvas. So I'm going to lay that down here. It's very thin. If you're going to use any of them with a brush, this is probably the only one I would suggest you could do that with. And you just lay it down like that. Let it dry. I would build up another, probably another layer if I was going to do an actual painting with this. So those are our textures. I'm going to let them dry. We're going to apply paint, then we're going to roll it and see what happens. Okay, so we've let the texture dry. Uh, that was 24 hours. And then we went over it. I went over it with a light coat of paint. No mediums or anything, just some paint and water. Let that dry. And then I went over some of the textures with a little bit of white because it was all just blending too much. I was afraid you wouldn't be able to see. So. Right now we'll go over our textures, what they are. Uh, let's see, the first one I laid down was the modeling paste right here. That's going to be your most rigid dry substance. It's going to give you some beautiful peaks and textures. This one was the modeling paste or molding paste with a heavy gel. And this, as you can see, the canvas is buckling quite a bit because when you lay texture on a raw canvas, no matter how much you've got it stretched, it's going to buckle a bit. You really need that tight drum stretch of working on a canvas or some sort of substrate where it has the, the canvas is just really, really wrapped tightly for this all to lay smoothly. So next we've got our string gel. Then we've got the fiber paste right here that's got that real bumpy and somewhat of an absorbency texture. Then I move to the absorbent ground, which is right here. And as you can see, it just basically looks like canvas with maybe a little bit of texture there. You really need multiple layers of absorbent ground to change the tooth of the canvas to a more paper like substance, which is what the purpose of that is to increase absorbency on your surface. So uh, that's right there, pretty dark. And then the last layer here I laid off canvas or off camera, and this is an extra heavy gel uh, gloss. And this is a beautiful paste to work with, gives you wonderful textures as you can see, and it is a gel. Uh, substance so it's going to give you more flexibility. I most often when I'm working with building textures I work with the extra heavy gel or the modeling paste because I really like that that uh, those peaks and the texture that it gives you. Uh, for fun textures I love the, the string gel, isn't that cool? And the fiber paste, this is awesome too. So uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to remove this and then we're going to roll it, let it dry thoroughly, come back and see. This 
canvas sit for the last couple of days and um, I can already see that I have some cracking in my paste. And some of these others look pretty good. So we'll unroll it and we'll see where we're at. Now again, I applied some of these fairly lightly, lighter than you probably would if you're doing a large canvas. Uh, definitely have some minute cracking here in the paste. The gel looks pretty good. Pretty, It's a pretty flexible substance, so it kind of rolls with it. Same with the string gel. Obviously, I wasn't worried about that one. That's so flexible as it is. The uh, fiber paste seems to have endured and done well. The absorbent ground, no issues. And then, of course, your heavy gel looks pretty good. So I would say, and this is from my experience and of course this experiment, that most of these are going to work for you. Stay away from your paste, your anything that's just a very rigid substance when it dries. Anything flexible will, will probably work. But however, you should always test. You should always, number one, paint on a rigid surface. So this should be stretched very tightly uh, and then removed from your stretcher bars to get the best texture and also not to have the canvas buckle because the canvas will buckle as it dries and contracts if it's not stretched tightly. Number two, you need to use things that have a flexible uh, ability and do your own test. If you're going to do a large scale canvas, definitely test out your texture before you go through the entire process and then have it crack. about using textures I have received you know various comments about can I use this various questions can I use this can I use that or I use this or that um, I use archival products because I want that endurability if that's a word <laughs> Uh, to stand the test of time. You know I don't need to stand withstand thousands of years in galleries for my art, but I do know that if I'm going to sell a piece, I want it to last for my collector, for my purchaser, and I want it to be archival um, depending on the temperatures and the various differences. I want it to last and I want it to be a nice piece of artwork that you know stands a, a period of time. If you want to use things like joint compound and, you know, home spackling and caulking and um, all kinds of different things like that, absolutely feel free to do whatever, especially if you're a hobbyist or you're just learning or experimenting and just doing projects for yourself. Absolutely use whatever it is that makes you feel good, that works for your budget. The products I use are a little pricier, but again, I want them to be, I want to complete a high-end nice piece that if I'm going to sell it, I'm going to, you know, proudly offer it to somebody and I know I use the best products that I can. So that's just my two cents on using whatever texture medium you want. I think it's great to experiment, but again, if you want an archival piece and you want to really um, build an art career, learn how to use the proper tools. Learn how to use the proper texture mediums, the proper mediums and paints and uh, tools for that. Those are professional tools and those are things that a professional uses. So that's just my two cents on that. So uh, that is the conclusion of this video on Will It Crack? 
And uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Please comment below. Let me know what you think. And join my uh, creative tips uh, group at 101artists.com. I send out some tips and various things. And I have tutorials and things uh, through that that you can also access. So thanks for watching.